What's up Spice Warriors, it's Dune Bro, and today we're going to be going over our Harkonnen Beginner's Guide. If you're looking to get into this faction, you see I just had a victory. This was in a four-player four multiplayer free-for-all. Uh, but going to go through basically some basics you should know about the faction, some of their mo more unique aspects, and then uh, get into uh, a little bit of thoughts of how I would, would play them. So, uh, yeah. Join me for this, and we are going to be uh, starting off talking about oppression with the Harkonnen. So, um, the Harkonnen, you can see their, their unique traits here. I'm going to pause this so you don't hear those noises. Uh, they can use oppression on Harkonnen villages. And what you can do is actually either... I'll show you in a second. Uh, so, you can go to a village. You can manually spend manpower to oppress the village. And when you oppress the village, it's going to have 100% village resource production. So, it's a way to kind of like stack up. Uh, your resource production, but the catch, when it ends, there's a 20% chance that local production, uh, local production chance to rebel each day. So your militia can rebel on you, and then you've got a, the, all of this production stops why until you kill the rebels. You got to have an army to kill them, but there's a way around doing that. So what I highly recommend is very very early on, tech towards this the martial economy. It gives you an additional militia slot and then it unlocks the office of the order. And if you build this, I've got one here right now. It constantly uses oppression for free. So it's not going to cost me an hour. It does have an upkeep here. And then your militia will fight the rebellions. So what I do is put these office of the order in high value villages, uh, particularly my spice villages. So I got an office of the order here. I've got one out here for some additional manpower. I've got one in each of my spice regions, or if there's just another resource you really want more of. Um, because if you do manually doing all the pressure, you're going to have to keep going around and putting the fires out. And you can do that. You certainly can. Like, look, I have the manpower I have in game. I could force a pressure on all of these, but I'm going to be running around with my harpies probably trying to kill them all. So I just let the uh, auto oppression basically uh, do its work once I unlock the office of the order. So get that early on is what I highly, highly recommend. Um, Cause this oppression is really good. Uh, but yeah, when it does wear off, you see how it's green right now, it'll go to uh, red. It won't be, it'll not be as efficient once it runs off and then they could rebel. But to, to pair with that, let's take a look at uh, the actually the counselors I have chosen. So um, if you choose Robin, a uh, rabbit, Golasu Robin, uh, has a heavy hand. Villages have additional militia, militia slot, and you gain 50 slurry upon killing rebel. You get gold for killing the rebels who rebelled against your oppression. So, how about that? Pretty cool. I also pick a uh, Fade Wrath uh, Harkonnen. Uh, can use corruption on Landstrad, Landstrad resolutions and uh, cause a loss of Landstrad standing if they get elected on it. So, and you're getting additional influence and agent recruitment speed uh, while one village is under oppression. And I'm basically always oppressing. Um, so what that looks like is when there's a vote comes up, you can spend uh, some intel to, to basically mess with those resolutions. Okay, so we talked about oppression. That's probably one of the most key uh, mechanics of this if you really want to know about. Um, let's talk about uh, a few more of their unique traits. So we talked about oppression. They can also sacrifice an agent to reduce a mission's cost and prep time. So uh, what that means is if you come in here to your espionage panel, you see how I have these little slots next to each of these. And by the way, I think the Harkonnen have the coolest missions available. Just going to say they've got some really cool ones. This toxic vapor, really good. Um, but I'll let you prove that on your own. So what you can do is take one of your, uh, one of your boys and you can assassinate them or sacrifice them. Um, and then basically it's going to cost minus 30% mission slurry and until cost and mission preparation time is like 100%. So it'll be instant. So watch this. I'll unpause. And if I do this, boom, that's like instantly done. Sacrifice that agent. So rip agent. But it was cheaper. It was instantly done. And uh, yeah, decoy not burn. Let's call it in there. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And you can see I can uh, go and try it again. So, you know. We can keep sacrificing, whatever. Okay, so that's going to be what that does. Um, in addition, faction bonuses, villages gain 5% resource production per active militia. So for that reason, very early on, you're going to need a 
ton of manpower because you're going to be filling these up with manpower. You already have additional militia slots uh, and because of uh, Rabin. Um, and, but if you fill these up, it's going to gain 5% resource production per active militia. Villages suffer nine, uh, negative 10% resource production. So out of the gate, they don't optimally work if they don't have enough militia to, you know, sufficiently oppress them. So fill these up early. Uh, you're going to target your spice region, of course, first. Um, and you kind of got to balance out how you're spilling your manpower between your army early on uh, and filling these up and then also spinning the manpower to do the oppression. Because you might want to do a little bit of manual oppression before you unlock that office of the order here. Um, okay, so that's the this is the faction bonuses. At 5k hegemony, you get 50 intel by pillaging any villages. I don't take advantage of this as much as I want, but if you want to micro a lot, yeah, you can get more intel if you're really trying to stack that for some missions. Um, killing an enemy non-mechanical unit gives a chance to get a brainwash agent. So you can get some additional agents there. Maybe you want to go for some assassination or something like that, or just uh, use some more uh, more of those missions. At 10k, sacrifice agents give a chance to not consume an operation on use, which is pretty crazy, and grants an additional plus one agent slot in each non-faction field. So that's going to be uh, all of the slots. So you can get up to four, which other factions cannot do. And by the way, if you're completely new to the game, essentially when you assign your agents to the different slots, this one's going to give you authority, this one's going to give you uh, manpower, this one's going to give you salari, and this one's going to give you influence. So that'll add up your bank. In addition, you can read the other stuff. And each of these have uh, have special traits. I don't really pay attention to these a whole lot. Uh, but yeah, they're uh, just been to know there. Um, okay, now. I want to show you the nuke just because I got one prepared right now. And who doesn't want to see a nuke? Now, you can nuke with any faction, but they re recently actually changed how nukes work uh, in Spice Wars. And maybe you're coming back to the game. Uh, you actually have to build the nuke silo in one of your villages. So I've built a nuclear silo here. You're going to need, uh, make sure you've got the energy cells for it. It costs a lot of upkeep. And then you have to click to queue up a, a nuke. Okay, I think it's like 5k Solari. And it will take time. It'll be a progress bar. And then once it's ready, you can send it off anywhere. Now, how this is going to work, I've actually been nuking this game. You notice I have zero Landsrad standing, so I've got no votes, my share is going to be terrible, and my Landsrad, the Landsrad guards are going to attack me every so many days, as they're doing literally right now. But late in game, like whatever, I just keep some Harpies here to defend, and I'm not scared. And then once I get this to zero, I just move my slider all the way down and just quit, quit giving them any spice. I'm just going to sell everything, okay? Anyway, so I'm going to use a nuke. Let's use it... Uh, here on his main base, and uh, there we go. The nuke is underway. We've queued that up, and it's right here as well. And it's going to send that nuke. I don't want to miss it, but here we go. It's going to come in. Boom! And it will wipe out any units there, do some collateral damage. It also uh, will, you can see, devastate nearby uh, production. So you can target spice regions if you don't want to target the main base. But do realize when you nuke, it's going to send your Lancer out standing down to zero. They're going to be very unhappy, so you're not going to get much voting after that. And then you're also, uh, yeah, your spice exchange rate is going to go down. So don't really do that until you really have a rocking economy and, of course, a military back it up. I do this when I'm going to go for, like, a military conquest. So now I can see I can spend 5K. It'll queue up another one, and it'll take a while to get that done. But the nukes are super fun. <laughs> Who doesn't want to nuke the enemy? Now, they can dodge it because it's a little bit for it to come in. It is possible to run slightly away. Usually you catch some of the units, but if they instantly react, they do get a big notification. It is possible that they'll dodge it. So I would caution using it on like units in open field. You want to use it on a, either a, like a production tile or on their main base is what I recommend as far as nukes. Now, uh, let's look at the uh, a few of the developments now. There's a lot of your typical developments. I'm not going to go through every single one, but what I will do is talk about the ones that are unique, which you see the little red ones next to. And I will also tell you like the opening strategy I am usually going for right now. Okay, so we're starting in the top left. Work ethics, that's going to give you a five man production for Plaskery, but it also gives you manpower production, which that's unique uh, for the Harkonnens. Um, and then I typically tech towards this right away, which I told you about because you want to get that Office of the Order which is so that you can oppress for free and automatically. So pretty sweet. You want to do that. Um, taking a look down here in the espionage tab, uh, you've got the cruel reputation, which using an operation 
on a faction in conflict grants 25% of its salary as influence. So you can get some influence back. Now, if you're trying to go the espionage route, you know, probably don't be nuking people because you're, you want to, you're trying to do probably a lot of voting, maybe trying to do some assassinations or going for good governorship or getting some of the uh, titles. Um, which, by the way, if you didn't know, like for the voting, there's all these big roles you can hold and you can see the different requirements to hold them as well. And of course, this is a win condition if you hold doing governorship for long enough. So something to consider there. Anyways, back into there. Um, Landside Whisperer is another unique one. Uh, as agents assigned on the Landside information slot get you 100% extra intel. It unlocks the Am Embassy and additional Landside information slot. And then over here we got Enhanced Questioning. Oppressed Villages grant plus one intel production and unlocks Interrogation Center, which of course uh, we're going to be oppressing all the time. If you tech, uh, you know, how I mentioned. And I'll show you. you know, here's the Interrogation Center. Gains 10 intel when killing enemy units and 100% chance to brainwash captured agents. So pretty cool there. Okay, heading on up to the military developments. You've got uh, a unique, you've got the adrenaline addiction, which is every time a unit dies, ally military units that are fighting nearby receive 1% additional power up to 10% max. So it's a little unique there. Uh, the, you get some rewards for units dying, depending on some of these things with Harkonnen. And then assembly lines makes your probes and harpy recruitment cost down and train time go down. I don't find this one particularly useful unless I guess you really need to spam harpies in the late game. But um, and then Arrakis Butchers is going to give you 100% damage against militia and rebels gain five manpower upon killing militia. So you're gonna, I mean, I'm always maxing out manpower towards the end, but uh, essentially get manpower for killing this. Thanks for the follow. And then the last but not least, let's look at our, uh, I don't know what you call this, the expansion uh, district studies. I don't know. Uh, you got instill fears. So this is going to give you uh, less authority cost to annex uh, pillaged villages, which I don't use this ton. But if you're doing a bunch of pillaging, that's going to be nice. If you pillage a bunch of lands, then it's going to be cheaper to later take it. Um, and then less authority cost to annex, again, a village owned by Harkonnen in the past. So if you took a village and you lost it, or maybe you gave it up, it's going to be cheaper authority to take in the future. So really good for military conquest, of course. You're seeing a theme here with the Harkonnens, right? Uh, and I actually haven't teched this way. Let's check these out. Savage, cleansing, pillaging a siege. So that's like the natives' sieges that show up. Uh, gives 100 authority and immediately reveals another siege. So you can go snuff out all the rebels, get an additional 100 authority, and a sexually, successfully pillage resupply 20% of max supply of units in occupation circle. So when you uh, pillage, you're going to get some resupply, essentially. So this can be really good. Savage cleansing. And then last but not least down here, symbols of authority, oppressed special regions. So that's going to be the ones with the star. If you're pressing them, they're going to grant plus one authority production, and it unlocks the crafts workshop. Um, as far as how I like to tech, just really at the opening, and honestly, there's a bunch of different ways you can go. And depending on who you ask, they're probably going to have something different to do. But for right now, I usually grab this first to get manpower and plascrete. Then I get this, so it costs less to annex villages and give you plus one water per controlled village. So you really don't have to build any of those. Uh, I really, I don't build any of the dew collectors. I just wait till I get my wind. Typically this will give me enough water for each one of them. And then I go straight for the martial economy. So you're going to get each village produced 10% um, per building constructed. And then you're going to get uh, the additional militia slot, which of course is going to remember because the bonus, each militia you add, 5% military, uh, production per active militia so that's going to help with that immediately and then you're going to get the office of order so you're going to be oppressing and it's going to automatically do it and your militia will fight the uh, rebels and then you get gold when you kill the rebels so i feel like this has to be a really good way to open so again work ethics local dialect go ahead this way and then from there i usually go pretty eco heavy so i like to get uh this whole tree i like this filtration system's really nice for water uh, and then this actually your fuel cells the very unique uh you can you basically get you get your slurry and water from having fuel cell factories so i find like i have plenty of fuel cells usually with harkonnen so grab those fuel areas and they're going to help pay for themselves essentially if you get this um and then once i'm ready to start nuking you know i usually like establish a good economy get some of this get some of this maybe like get these first few ones and then it's like okay let's get a nuke ready and then let's start getting the military ready now if i see I'm facing a lot of pressure early on. You might see me grab some of these a lot quicker, of course, uh, but that's basically gonna be it. So 
Uh, the only thing we didn't talk about were the units, so you got a, a lot to choose from. Trooper, Gunner, Cerberus, Stealth Probe, Executioner, Harpy, Overlord, and Assassin. And I'll tell you, I don't know the like exact intricacies of some of these. So Cerberus is actually a unique thing. It'll split into smaller units as it dies. So I think it's kind of like maybe a meat shield of sorts. I don't find it to be particularly great of a unit. But most of your army is going to be troopers and gunners, and then you're going to unlock the executioner. And so I'll usually have like a, like a few executioners, followed with a lot of gunners, and then in the later stage of the game, Harpy is a really good mobile air unit. for. I use it usually just to quell uh, the rebellions or just leave it over my main base. So when the lance red come when I'm nuking, they just automatically kill the lance red for me. Uh, they'll, they're pretty squishy. They'll die um, if they're out over the enemy main base. And then, of course, you got your big chungus, the overlord. I think I have an overlord up here somewhere. Uh, where is he? He's right here. I'll let you see him in action. Here we go. So there he is. And he can send out these little drones. You can even have a little uh, ability you can use here. And you can see the little drones flying around up here. There's that overlord for you. But pretty much, guys, that's going to be uh, the basics to playing as the Harkonnens. I've really been enjoying doing uh, conquest victories with them. And, uh, you know, playing around with nukes, having a good time with that. I hope you enjoyed this beginner's guide. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if it helped you out. And I do have a Harkonnen playthrough if you just want to see me playing this faction available on the channel. So go check that out on my previous upload. Or I've got other guides. Go check out my ECAS guide. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.